Welcome friends. We bought this property during the summer a couple years ago. So everything looked dry like it usually does in the summer. But when we get lots of rain like we recently did, water collects in a few spots like this. And this. which isn't too bad because it dries up in a few days just in time to mow the lawn. But in the springtime when we have a lot of snow melt and heavy rain it sometimes gets like this. Okay that stake is in 8 inch deep water. From this, the edge of this wet area here to, this, to the other side is like 56 feet. It's about 36 feet. To the stake. From that far end to that far end, 66 feet, and from the stake to that other side was 30 feet. From the stake to that end, 30 feet. I'd like to work on some lawn drainage projects, but my first priority has to be moving roof water away from the foundation. There are gutter down pipes that go into buried drain pipes like this one, but they all seem to be plugged up like this. So a lot of water ends up collecting right up against the outside of the foundation walls. And it can easily be seen seeping through the block walls in the cellar. Well, there's water running right down in there. I can see it. Don't know if the camera catches the movement. I can hear it. Pouring down inside the wall there. That's crazy. Right there. I don't know if this can pick it up. There's water pouring down inside that wall. I can hear it. Yeah, that has to be dealt with from outside, I think. You can see the outline of the mineral deposits on the wall and the stained areas. Um, I'll put a line around it here. 
Remember what the wet areas on the block wall looked like in the previous video? That isn't as wet as it gets. Sometimes there's so much water pushing through that wall that the outlined area shown here gets totally wet like that. I didn't get a good picture of it like that, but I did a quick Photoshop to show what that looks like. This area on the back wall is under the back deck. The soil grade under the deck drops a good 8 inches as it gets closer to the foundation. That will need to be regraded next summer to see if that's all it needs. If you look closely, there's water dripping close to that receptacle. It's actually coming down behind the white vapor barrier, so the electrical there isn't getting wet. The bottom of the cellar wall on the opposite end also gets wet when we have a lot of rain. This video shows where it gets wet, but it used to be a lot worse than that. It got a lot better after I made some experimental changes. The first thing I did was to divert my downspouts 10 feet away from the clog buried pipes with downspout pipe extensions. Great. There are three gutter downspouts on the front of the house. I diverted those away from the clog buried pipes and extended them to drain across the front walk.
the length of these extended pipes plus the width of the front walk deposits the water more than 10 feet away from the foundation. Some sections of the concrete walkway have settled a bit over the years, but the longest section right in front of the house has remained perfectly level across its width. The level walk isn't the best at draining water off its surface, so I went as far as to cut the sections at their expansion joints in preparation for regrading the walkway to provide better natural drainage. <music> Oh, by the way, the Hilti concrete saw I rented from the big box takes a lot of power to run it. The 120 volt receptacle on the front of our house is only 15 amp rated, so that didn't cut it. I ended up having to run this 12 gauge NM cable directly from a spare circuit breaker in the main panel out to an industrial 20 amp receptacle I have in my electrical supply storage. Fortunately, the saw came with a GFCI protected power plug. So it was safe to use it with all that cooling water running on the blade. going all the way through right into the dirt below so I know I made it all the way through the concrete. The thickness of this concrete walk is anywhere from probably three and a half inches to over four inches in some spots. It's very thick. It's that thick I still don't think it's all the way through. I'm hitting, I'm hitting a hard bottom. I've got to set the saw to cut deeper.
Okay, this is this is a wet saw. When you turn this on, the water turns on. And that helps to cool the blade. It also keeps the dust down. There's no dust because everything's wet. It's it's mud. The depth of the cut is cut by this thing, how far down that goes. That's how deep we're cutting. Four inches. We're going to cut right on the seam. This mark here, and, uh, and this one back here, should line up with the seam. It's close, it's not exact. So, get the blade in the seam. There's little wheels here. This is a safety. Push the safety, pull the handle in. <coughs> Now you turn it around and go the other way. The biggest thing you have to be concerned about is that if you drop it too fast or you drop it in an area that's not cut, it's going to kick back real hard. And the best thing you can do is let go of that, that switch. Your hand is covering the safety. Push the safety, squeeze the trigger. back up. Lift it though. There you go. Turn it back up. might be wondering why I cut almost every walkway expansion joint. It's because almost the entire walk needs to be regraded in the near future, especially that big section in front of the front stoop. That has settled unevenly and several inches on one end. This needs to be fixed at some point. 